Brady McCall. I'm a life scout with Boy Scout Troop 42 in Louisville, Kentucky. For my Eagle project, I wanted to do something special and personal to me, but would also benefit others. I'm lucky to have had my grandfather around my entire life. He's a retired firefighter and a true hero. He is my hero. So I'm going to pass it on over to Brady. Okay, here we go. Good afternoon, everyone. How are y'all doing today? <laughs> Excellent. Thank y'all for coming today. We are going to be learning about a very important topic for everyone. Fire safety in and around your home. My name is Brady McCall. I went to school here too. I am currently a life scout and I'm going for my eagle. The Eagle Scout rank is the highest rank you can achieve in Boy Scouts, and today this presentation will help me get it. To help me today, I've brought a very special guest, my grandfather, David Ert. I call him Tonka. Yeah, Tonka, yeah. He's a, he is a retired major for the Louisville Fire Department. I've also brought my fellow Scouts, both here with me today and on video. first thing we're going to be talking about today is knowing your address and your phone number, as well as who to call if there's an emergency. Davis and Howe are going to be talking about that. Thank you, Brady. It's very important to know your home address. The numbers outside your home should be clearly visible. They should be at least four inches tall and not blocked by leaves or bushes. If there is an emergency at your home, First responders like police, EMS, or firefighters need to see the numbers on your home so they can get to you quickly. It's also very important to know your phone number and how to use the phone in case there is an emergency. If there is an emergency at your home, dial 911 and tell the operator your address. If the emergency is a fire, don't call from your home. Leave your house immediately or call from outside or use a neighbor's phone. Thank you, Davis and Hal. Now, raise your hand if you know your address. Very good. Now, raise your hand if you know your phone number. Excellent. Now, everyone together. What number do we call if there is an emergency? Good. Outstanding. Now, Quinn and Eric are going to tell us the importance of having working smoke detectors in your home. It is important that you have at least one smoke detector on each floor of your house. There are different kinds of smoke detectors. Some detectors are hardwired, which means that they are connected directly to the electrical wires. There are also lithium battery detectors, that last for 10 years. And some people have detectors that use a 9-volt battery. Regardless of the type of detector you have, they should be tested once a month. There are buttons on your detector that you push to test your detector. If it beeps, your detector is working. Ask your parents what kind of detectors you have and ask them if you can help test them once a month. If your detectors are the 9-volt kind, the battery should be changed twice a year. 
He recommends when daylight savings time begins and ends. Thank you, Quinn and Eric. Now, raise your hands if you know you have a working smudge detector in your house. Good. Now, if you aren't sure, please ask your parents. And, like Eric said, ask your parents if you can help test them. Sometimes parents get forgetful and they need our help to remember things. Next, we're going to talk about what to do if the smoke detector goes off while you are sleeping. Let's now hear from Jake and Anthony. If you hear your smoke detector beeping while you are sleeping, do not panic. Slowly roll out of bed and start crawling towards the door. If there is smoke in your room, it will build up in the ceiling and slowly drift down. So stay low where the air is clear. Once you reach the door, feel it with the back of your hand. Do not touch the doorknob. If there is a fire outside your door, the metal doorknob will heat up fast and you can burn your hand if you touch it. The back of your hand is more sensitive to the heat and a wood door will not heat up as quickly as the doorknob. If the door is not hot and there is no smoke coming in, you can open the door while still crawling and get out of the house. If the door is hot, do not open it. There, if there is smoke coming in, you can put a blanket or sheet at the base of your door to stop the smoke from coming in. Stay back and wait for help. Stay low to the ground and near the bed for you will be easier to find. Thank you, Jake and Anthony. Now, we're going to be talking about having an emergency escape plan if there's a fire in your home. Tommy and Max will tell us about that. Remember, if there's a fire in your house, there are two ways out of your room. The door and where else? Where else? If your door is hot or there is smoke coming in, don't open it. Crawl to your window. If it is safe to stand, you can open it and leave your house through the window. If your bedroom is on the second floor, some people use a rope ladder. You hook to your windowsill and climb down the ladder. Remember, using a rope ladder takes a lot of practice, and you should only practice when your parents are with you. If you don't have a rope ladder, just sit tight near your bed and someone will come and get you. You should also have an escape plan for every room in your house. Once you're outside, you need to have a safe meeting place, like a big tree or a neighbor's house. Once there, make sure everyone is accounted for and call 911. Never go back into your house for anything. Thank you, Tommy and Max. That's right, guys. Never go back in your house for anything. That favorite toy of yours can be replaced. Things can be replaced. You cannot. Now, who here practices an emergency escape drill in their own home? All right, about half of y'all. Okay. Something everyone needs to do. We have fire drills at school, right? Yeah. All right. Just like at school, you need to practice at home. Next, we're going to be talking about staying away from hot things. Bill and Cameron are going to help us with that. It is very important that you stay away from things that could burn you. If your parents are cooking on the stove or in the oven, do not touch. Stand back. I know things that are cooking in the oven smell good. But don't get close until your parents say that it's okay. Do your parents cook on the grill outside? Yeah. On the grill? Yeah. That's right, Brady. Good call. The same thing applies to cooking outside, too. Do not stand too close. Never, and I mean never, play with matches or a lighter. If you see matches or a lighter laying on the ground, do not touch them. 
Tell your parents and they will put them away. If you get too close to something that is hot and burn yourself, tell your parents and run cool water over the burned area. But what do you do if your clothes catch on fire? Does anybody know what to do if your clothes catch on fire? Stop, drop, and roll. And remember to cover your face with your hands when you're rolling. Thank you, Bill and Cameron. Next, we're going to be talking about firefighters and the clothes that they wear to protect themselves from the smoke and fire. Cameron and Zach are going to be helping us with that. Firefighters have to wear protective clothing to keep them safe from the fire and smoke. Taco, if you could help us by putting on your fire clothes, that would be very much appreciated. When firefighters receive an alarm at the firehouse, the first thing they put on are their boots and fire pants to protect their legs and feet. Taco, can you show us? Those are the boots and uh, pants that the firefighters will be wearing to protect their legs and feet. The next thing they put on is their hood, which protects their neck and ears. They then put on their fire coat, which protects their upper body. So, is that everything that needs to be protected? No. no. What else needs to be protected? Hands. Face. Hands. Hands. Face and hands. That's right. Firefighters need to protect their head, hands, and face as well. But they don't put on their helmet, gloves, and mask until they get to where the fire is. Tonka, do you think you could show us what it looks like with your helmet, face, mask, and gloves on? That is what firefighters look like when fully protected. The firefighters will also wear a tank on their back, which connects to their mask and feeds them fresh air. But, but uh, Tonka did bring one of those uh, tanks with him today. Thank you, Cameron and Zach. All firefighters' clothes are made out of a fire resistant material that allows them to get close to the fire without getting burned so that they can put out the fire. Without getting burned? Now, we're going to 
we're going to go back to what we have learned to see if you were paying attention. We're going to use Tonka as our guinea pig. Let's have some fun. If we see Tonka doing something wrong, we need to yell out and tell him, okay? Okay, Tonka, are you ready? We're going to put Tonka to bed to see if he remembers what to do when the smoke detector goes off. Tonka, go to bed. No, Tonka, you can't be there. Like, you can't breathe there. Tonka, come back. there must be fire on the other side and I can't get out the door and I live on the second floor and I can't get out the window what do I do what do I do I know I'll hide under my bed fire outside and I live on the second floor what do I do what do I do I know I'll go hide in my closet I'll lay down my, by my bed and wait for help. You did it right that time, right? Yeah. 
All right, Taco, you can come on back. How did that do? Okay. I have one more thing for you. Let's say you're cooking on the grill and you get too close. Your clothes catch on fire. What do you do? Why don't you show us? Stop uh, catching on your clothes. Yeah. 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 